presentación. Magandang araw sa iyong lahat. That means good day to you all in Filipino. I will be going to two cultural events. So the first half of this video will be about me going to a Filipino festival, which I hope will be an interesting concept for you because where is this? Well, I'm in Spain, the city center of Madrid, to be more precise. I know I've made it once I found a whole bunch of lost Filipinos walking around trying to find the venue. <laughs> And here is the venue. It's a lot more spacious than what my camera can show, which is great. Actually, however, I got here on time, or at least that's what all the flyers said. Do you think what they say about Filipino time is true? You know Filipino time truly exists. When the program says 8 a.m. and it's already 8.30 a.m. and no signs of it starting. In any case, it seems like it's very well prepared and decorated. I'm impressed that everything looks just about ready to begin. For this many people to be here so early on a Saturday morning is a good sign. Alright, so it's 9am and it <laughs> hasn't started yet. Let's go Filipino time, let's go. Hmm, I wonder if the stereotype of Filipino time comes from the stereotype of Spanish time. What do you think? Hello! Okay, I think it's starting. Buenos dias, it's starting, I guess. Marigayang Araw ng Kalayaan means Happy Independence Day, which I guess is the Philippines' independence from Spain. Which is ironic because here we all are in Spain. I cannot give you a history lesson on that because I'm embarrassed to say that I do not know too much about this history because the history that I had growing up was American history. Which also had a hand deep in Filipino history, but that's a video for another day. Anyway, what I have been waiting for all morning was the parade, which kind of kickstarts the day ahead. Here are a variety of different groups and organizations around the city by and for the Filipino community. Um. After the opening ceremony, there were some performances, and while that was going on, I went to go check out the booths by different Filipino-owned businesses around Madrid. I think all of this is really helpful because even if I don't need anything from them at the moment, I know that if I needed to get something done, I can go to a business owned by other Filipinos. This is a handmade bag with a jeepney on it. A jeepney is a very Filipino mode of transportation. One booth that caught my attention was a photo studio. They're called Matik Studios. M-A-T-I-K. Go follow and support Filipino-owned businesses, y'all. And go. Hello, we are Matik Studios, the first cell photo studio here in Madrid. And basically it's a photo booth. So you come in, you can take photos, unlimited photos within the time limit. And you're gonna get all the digital copies um, through your phone and also some printouts. Just buy new culture, overcome challenges, and keep All on the spot. Cute, okay. Thank you. You have to come back now. <laughs> oh. Okay. So, this is our first pop up studio. Okay. We've got the camera over here. And then this one. With the button. Oh, I see it. I see myself. 
There you go. You'll see yourself over here. We okay. just press the button and your photo is taken. We've got our flash over here that will go off every time you take a photo. So for today, we've got two minutes. In two minutes, maybe you can take about 10 photos already. You're going to get everything directly sent through your phone through airdrop or through your transfer. And then you can get printouts as well afterwards. Okay. Thank you. Can I tag you? Yes. After all of the fun and lollygagging, it's time for some food. I know how some of y'all love you some Filipino food. I liked how there was just a variety of different foods from different regions. One food stall that caught my eye was what I thought to be Ilocano food was actually from a different region. So I tried to ask them about it. Okay, peanut bread, candy. Good one. Pack bread. Pack bread, Ilocano. Ilocano, but it's not Batangas. Batangas. Ilocano, I'm Ilocano, Tatay. Ilocano, I'm Adine, pack bread. Thank you! What stood out to me most about being here was using different languages. I didn't know which one to use. I'm a native English speaker, and English, I feel like, was just the common language to use. But then I thought, this is Spain, I should be talking in Spanish. But then what I was hearing mostly was classic Tagalog. I also grew up speaking Ilocano, so I could also latch on to other Ilocanos here. The gears of all four different languages were really making their rounds all up in my head. I didn't know what was coming out of my mouth. But generally, that is what makes these cultural events all the more exciting. Alright, so before we end the video, I just want to make a small clarification. So, I guess pinakbut is a Tagalog word, but is a food indigenous to the northern regions of the Philippines, which is where my parents are from. Um, what I had growing up, what my mom made a lot for me growing up, was both pinakbut and dinangdang. Dinangdang is like more truly Ilocano for me. I mean, they're both pretty Ilocano, but that's the kind of uh, super small distinctions that I had to be making at the moment. So yeah, um, pinakbut, dinangdang, all look and taste pretty similar. And yeah, hopefully I can show you all in a YouTube video one day. <laughs> so stick around for that. So yeah, that was my day at Barrio Fest, the Filipino festival here in Madrid. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And now for part two. My day at a Japanese culture festival. While the Barrio Festival was to celebrate Philippines' independence from Spain, as for this Japan Cultural Festival, I don't really know what they were doing here. I got here right when it opened and immediately had a kerfuffle with my ticket because it included two workshops, but it wasn't showing up on my ticket. Thanks to the gate ticket lady, no thanks to the red box lady. She said, come join a workshop right now. And I'm like, yeah, you're so slave for that. And here I am making a cute plant. This workshop is called Kokedama and we actually got to keep the plant at the end of it. Ask me if it's still alive. <laughs> here, they have other Japanese-esque plants on display and here are some other booths as well. They have one big indoor space they do for performances. I saw a kendo show and then a taiko show. All right, let's get some food. This is their dining space and a simple offering of drinks. I think the ticket included one drink, which was nice. <laughs> I had barbecue, some fried chicken, some inari sushi, and for my drink, I got a ramune. The staff was like, do you know how to open it? And I'm like, yes, miss girl. So it comes with like a plastic thing where you press down on it and like a marble falls down. Okay, I suck at explaining it, but you can see it visually, right? 
For the second workshop, I did furoshiki, which is like the art of fabric folding, or something like that. Unfortunately, unlike the plant, we could not bring home the fabric. I even picked this pattern out myself. Ask me if I'm going to remember how to do any of this in the future. Mm, don't actually. They showed us how to fold different objects. I guess the gift box is the most common thing to fold. Then more obscure objects, like a ball, then even a big bottle. It's too cute not to take home with me, but oh well. By the way, this is one of their workshop schedule posters. It's the way they wanted to add more times that makes it just so chef's kiss. Time for a kakigori break. This is shaved ice with flavors. And lastly, a kimono photo shoot. How many times have I worn kimonos on this channel? And that's the video. Vlogs of me going to a Filipino festival and a Japan culture festival, all in one video. I hope you enjoyed and see you all again next time. Bye. Salamat. Sayonara. Adios. <laughs>